Hi everyone, German from the CustomGeek.com here, and I have my RGB LED controller. So I wanted to show this off, and um, I've already introduced this guy, but this is a second revision, so I want to go over some changes, and then if you're just joining us, I'll briefly go over what this guy does. So as you might have guessed from the name, uh, this is an LED controller. It controls high power um, or a number of LEDs, and it runs with a 328 um, Atmel at Mega 328, uh, running an Arduino bootloader. Um, and so uh, that's the that's the brain of the operation here. Uh, four MOSFETs for four channels of dimmable output. Um, the outputs are, are here in selectable 12 or 5 volt. So I can have a 5 volt output or a 12 volt output. Uh, 12 volt primarily for LED strips. Um, so control, there are a couple ways to control this. I have push buttons here uh, for manual control. Uh, I have an IR sensor uh, built in here. So if you want to hit it with a remote, you can do that. And then I have uh, serial control. Now serial control, um, there's a serial terminal block here for ground, RX, and TX. And then um, you can see some jumpers on here. Um, this is selectable TTL or RS-232. So there's two different types of serial. Um, you can communicate uh, either way if you have different automation systems or something RS-232. Uh, this chip here, this MAX-232 CPE will take care of the conversion both ways and in and out. So this can talk to your system, and your system can talk to this. Um, also over here, there's an FTDI header for easy programming of the chip if you want to dump new firmware in there. And then uh, you can also use this serial to communicate while it's running. And then here, um, uh, these XP adapter boards from Adafruit are great, so much to the fact that I put headers on here for one. So now if you plug this guy in, now you have a wireless RF LED controller. So that's another way to control it. Uh, there. And then um, there's power uh, inputs, the DC barrel jack, and then also a two-wire um, terminal block for, for power input and output, or I'm sorry, power input. And then uh, this female header down here is the row of pins that are not being used by the 328. One of them, pin number four, is shared with one of the push button switches. Uh, so there's all your analog pins, analog uh, zero through five, and then there's uh, six digital pins down here, including two with PWM. And then uh, analog four and five are your I squared C bus, but those are also over here. Um, and so if you want to run an I squared C device, you can have that over here. And then there's five volts in ground right here also. So if you want to have like a shield type thing, you can just take one cable and then it'll provide power as well as the, the data lines there. So that's uh, that's pretty much what this thing is in a nutshell. Let's go over the changes now from the first board. So um, this is the first board here. I'm just going to put it underneath the second board. So uh, just real quick, um, a few changes is the IR sensor is now facing the correct way. That was an error on the first board that you had to bend it over. Uh, so it looks a little bit nicer now. And then this is the old board with the uh, large block, the 5 millimeter um, terminal block for the serial input output is now a smaller 3.5 millimeter block, which left room to squeeze in a 5 millimeter uh, two connector block for power. Um, and the other um, addition is the last four pins here, the five volt ground and the dedicated I squared C bus um, was not on the other one. So that's pretty much the, ol the only changes um, except for um, you can see that uh, if I shed this in the light here, that little trace going up there, these traces for the power um, were not very thick. On the new board, they're much, much thicker. In fact, I got an email from a customer this morning running. Uh, he ran uh, five meters of RGB strips like overnight and without a problem. I've tested it, um, put it through the ringer too, and I've got some very pleasing results with temperature and stuff like that. So you can run a lot more amperage through this guy now. And uh, that pretty much wraps it up for uh, hardware changes, and uh, let's plug it in and see it work. Hi, guys. I'm going to run you through the default firmware setup here. So I have my 12-volt adapter here. I'm just going to plug this guy in. And uh, it'll boot up, and it'll color cycle this LED, and then... I ramp up the white and they'll both go go down when it's done doing that. So um, these two buttons right here are the manual control. So this bottom one here is for colors. And so as you push this, uh, you'll cycle through the red, uh, the green, and the blue. And then it does the basic um, red, green, blue. And I think it does uh, magenta and then blue, green. That's really, really bright. It might help you see the colors better. But uh, it'll cycle through all the colors here. Uh, this top one is, is for the white. Uh, and it just toggles it on and off by default if you don't want to do anything else. And so um, 
this also will put this into a cycle when it gets done with all the colors. I think it does um, RGB with uh, red, blue, green, and then it does a magenta, and then blue, green, a teal, and then a yellow, and then it does a white with all three, the red, blue, blue and green, and then it does the cycle mode here. And so, um, and to stop that, I just hit that again, and that'll go down to zero. And then uh, this is the um, the white LED just on and off here. So that's by uh, default, and then we're going to go ahead and play with some serial commands, and we can tweak some settings in the color cycling and, and the direct commands of, of levels of the LEDs. All right, guys, we have our board plugged in here, and uh, you can see we have our sketch open here, and I'm just going to open the serial monitor here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to send this guy some basic commands. So um, to turn an LED on, you type in the color. So if we say uh, red, that's the color we want turned on, and then type in the level in percentage from 1 to 100, of course. So uh, if we want red on all the way, we type in red 100, and the red LED will come on to 100%. Um, the same thing for off, if you say red zero, what it'll do is it'll go down to zero. And the same holds true with, with all the colors. Um, uh, white 45, blue 17, green 78. So now we have all those colors uh, there. Let's turn red back on to whatever. Um, just turn it up a little bit more. And so we have these colors here. And uh, one, one of the commands is all off. So if you want all the LEDs off, you have multiple LEDs on. Instead of sending individual commands, you can just say all off. And when you do that, um, of course, all the LEDs will turn off. And so that's how you individually control LEDs. It's pretty basically simple. Just the color and then a space and then the level from 0 to 100 uh, will control their brightness. Now you'll notice like, if we turn the, the red LED on to 100, you'll notice that the default ramp rate, how fast the LED turns on, is about 4. Um, that's kind of written in a delay, so uh, that speed, the bigger the ramp number, the slower that it goes on and off. So um, if I say red zero, um, you can see how fast it goes on. Now if I turn that back on, and then I change the ramp to, um, let's change it to 30, the default number is 4. So if I change that to 30, those settings are also stored in EEPROM, so when you power off uh, your controller and turn it back on, those settings are saved. Now, if we say red zero, um, the LED will take a lot longer to fade out. The, the fading will be a lot more smooth, and so um, it's a little bit long for my liking. So we're gonna we're gonna turn this back to whoops. Um, we're gonna turn this back to four. And it's the same reason that if you say ramp one, uh, it'll fade very very quickly. So uh, if we do that, they'll ramp up very very fast and go down very very fast. Oops. So uh, you can also uh, turn the ramp off. If you just say ramp zero, it turns all the takes all the delay out. Then when you say red 100, it almost snaps. Um, it's almost instantaneous. So let's put that back um, at four. Okay, guys. Next we have cycle. So we'll say C Y C L E, and it starts to color cycle. So um, when it color cycles, there's two settings you can change. There's uh, the stay, which is how long it stays on the color in between cycles, and then the rate, the rate of cycle. So if we put the rate down to uh, zero, um, again, too, this is uh, also a delay. So the less uh, this number, the faster it will cycle. Now, if we send that command, uh, when it cycles back around, it's just going to be obnoxious because it's going to fly through the, the colors uh, really soon. Now, if we say stay for... Uh, this is done in number of seconds. Um, so now we have a two second stay with a very with a very fast rate. So what that does, as you can see, is it cycles the transition very fast, but it stays on that color for two seconds. Now if we say um, uh, the rate is going to be uh, default is four, so we'll say uh, the rate is four, and so now when it comes back around, it'll catch that four, and now it'll do a very slow transition, still keeping the stay uh, at two seconds. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of those two variables in the color cycle mode. And then to get it to stop, uh, just type in stop, and then what it'll do is when it catches, it'll just it'll calm it down, and then you're back to your uh, your regular commands that you can do here uh, if you want to play with those two. That pretty much wraps it up. 
Hey guys, we're going to control some 12 volt LED strips now here through the controller. I have a processing sketch running. Uh, this is an FTDI cable connected to, whoops, um, and I have a, uh, a sketch in here. Um, uh, that's basically the four channels of this board here, and so you can see that um, we have control over those guys uh, with toggle buttons and then also too with the with the sliders here. So uh, another way you can control this guy through serial and have some fun with this. Um, There's lots of fun. I could spend hours doing this, but I won't. Anyway, now I want to show you some other things. Uh, we have the controller here and some RGB strips and a warm white strip hooked up to the outputs here. Um, these extra pins here, uh, before I did an other video when I had uh, one of those little uh, Nokia 5110 LCDs, these guys run at 3.3 volts. I should have had a level shifter on there. I did not. Shame on me. Slap on wrist so on and so forth. But these can run at 5 volts. So this is um, this is a 1.8 inch uh, LCD from Adafruit. Um, I love these little things. They're, they're quite cool actually. So if we slip this guy in here and um, now we plug it in with our FTDI cable, uh, it'll take a little bit longer to boot uh, but you'll see why in a minute here and it has uh, initializes the LCD and then uh, it draws bars representing the different levels. So if we say uh, we've got our FTDI cable hooked up, uh, red at 33, green at uh, 66, and then uh, blue at 50 maybe, and then white at 100. You can see these uh, these levels here uh, will go ahead and, and, and go up and down. Now, uh, and then if we say all off, uh, they will all go back to zero. Now we don't have our 12 volt source plugged in, that's why the strips aren't lit up. And let's do something different now real quick, I want to show you something else. Um, let's take this guy and let's plug this guy into um, the FTDI. That's the little XB adapter and let's take this other little XB adapter and let's just pop it in here and then grab some power over here. I'm not going to put this piece of acrylic over this. Um, it kind of calms the camera down a little bit from from blowing up, so to speak, because it's pretty daggone bright. So now we have a wireless XP connection. So um, all we have is the 12 volt power coming in here, like I just plugged in, and then the XP. There's there's nothing else um, contacting this. And so uh, over XP, we can say red uh, 30. Uh, let's change it up. 66. Um, blue 10. Um, green 34 and white um, at 75. And so now you see these representations, uh, whoops, uh, 75, not just 7. So now there's, uh, you, this is utilizing an LCD, uh, this is basically wireless, it just has the, uh, the power going to it, uh, using the XP for communication uh, via serial and uh, another handy little thing you can do with these output pins here. Alright guys, uh, to explain this next setup here, um, I have an ATX power supply uh, with lots of amps, and then I have uh, the board here running the same uh, LCD and XP, and then I have fans. Uh, someone wanted quieter UPS power supplies, I was at a job, and so I gave them quieter fans and I took the old ones home. So this is one channel, uh, four fans, another channel, another four fans, and a third channel, and then the fourth channel is hooked up to taillights, um, incandescent taillights, uh, to the bright, bright filament. There's two filaments in there. So, uh, we're going to see how this guy does. We're going to start firing stuff up here. And if all else fails, I can make uh, the dozen copter. We'll see about that later. So there's the first channel. Um, let's fire up the bulbs. Those are heavy. Um, more fans. And then finally, the last set of fans. So we're at about 6.2 amps, um, 6 and a quarter amps, something like that. Uh, the board temperature is good. Uh, the FETs are pretty cool, actually. Uh, very happy with that. The traces on the board, the main trace that's carrying the positive load is. Um, you could feel it getting a little bit warm, but it's nothing to be like majorly concerned over. So I'm pretty happy. I'm going to turn this off because of noise. 
But um, I'd say overall, uh, you can, I would say safely, you can drive an amp uh, per channel on this on, on this board. Um, apologize about the noise for the fans, and it takes a lot of LEDs to get up to six amps. I even I don't know if I have that many LEDs. Maybe I need to order some more. So um, anyhow, that's uh, that's how it stands up to big current, and uh, that pretty much wraps it up.